Kaden, can you tell me what was the strongest memory you have from auditioning for this role of JG? Oh yeah. Uh, so my Titi, me and my teacher are very close, all right? And so she had to take me to the audition. And so, you know, it has cussing in it. And so when I had to cuss, and then when she heard me, she was like, oh my gosh, oh my baby. So yeah, that was my strongest memory of it. And then she was like, you know, you keep cussing, you know I'm gonna have to whoop, right? That was basically my strongest memory of it. That is hilarious. That's a that's a pretty strong memory, but it's hilarious. How about you, Arlen? <laughs> um, honestly, I think for me, it was uh, just at, honestly, I think getting the call, you know, getting the call that uh, that I that I got the job, that I got the role. Um, excited to follow behind Caden's footsteps because he literally, you know, he JG is 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 Caden and Caden is JG. Like he really left a, a a big footprint for me to step into. So I was just excited, blessed, and, uh, you know, excited at the same time. Oh, so there's this line that says, um, can't ever go back, can't ever do it, right? I forget who says it, but it, it resonated very strongly with me. And I wanted to know if there, for both of you, if there's a moment in your life and or in your careers thus, thus far that you would want to do over for, and if so, what that moment is, I'll start with Arlen first. You know what? I will say this. Every disappointment has been for the best. Uh, I always say rejection is God's protection. So I'm not going to change anything because I, I, I've learned from the no's. I've grown from the, from the no's. And at the same time, blessed with the yeses. So for me to be where I am now, I think I had to go through those moments. And I think even on our show, David, JG, we're all going to learn that, you know, that we have to go through those growing pains to really appreciate where you are standing right now. So for me, I'm going to sit tight. All right. And Caden? Uh, I'm, I'll, I'll go back to a happy moment. When I got the card, I was going to book the show. Uh, I wouldn't want to change anything. I would just want to go back to that moment and just relive it because it was so it was like, it was something different. It just gave me like a different feeling. Like if I could go back and relive that moment, I would in a heartbeat. You are such a beautiful spirit. I kind of love you, Caden. I think I got a little <laughs> crushy crush. Um, <laughs> so do we think, just to talk about JG for a second, do we think that JG is the member of the family that is the glue that holds the family together? Everybody Every family has that one person that is the nucleus for the family. Do we think that JG is that person? I'll start with um, Arlen first. Wow. Do I think that JG is the person that holds the family together? <clears throat> Honestly, I would. Th I, I think it's more. I think it's Gloria. I think it's our mother. I think it's our mother. She. She. We're all connected to her. And both David and JG, you know, they, they, they grow from her. She's the foundation that they, they both go back to more often than not. And she's the woman that, you know, that was the first woman that starts shaping them to become the men that you'll see, you know, in, in season two. So I think Gloria is really that glue. And, you know, both David and JG, we are the fruits of that tree. Yeah. Do you agree with that, Caden? Yeah, I agree with that. I'm going to have to go with that same answer. Yeah, because she stays so strong, you know, even through all the things that happen, you know, living in the environment she lives in, you know, the addiction she was battling. Right. But she still stays strong and, you know, help the kids out and raise them to be the people they are today, which who, which is a police officer and a, an amazing businessman. So, yeah, I'm going to have to agree with that answer. Let's hit, let's hit on Gloria for a second. Gloria is your mom. And she's a single mom and single moms have a hard way to go in this country as it is. But when you are a black single mom living in the Ville, it's a completely different situation for your mothers. What's the one thing that you would want to do, regardless of what your background is, that you would want to do or say to make life easier for your mom? Because moms have a hard way to go, especially when they raise them boys. <laughs> Did you say where you say boys are tough? Yeah, boys are tough. Look, my mom, I have a brother. My mom said that between the two of us, I was the easiest one to raise because she's a woman. She knows what a woman does. She don't know what's going on in a, a, a little boy's head. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This so what, what do you think about that? Uh, 
I think, can you, can you repeat the question one more time? I'm so sorry. Of co- that's okay. Of course I can. What do you think you could do to help your mom raise you into a young, capable, thoughtful young man? I think for me, uh, my mother and I, we have a wonderful relationship uh, because we we grew up so close. Uh, and I think for me, one of the best things that I've done and we continue to do is communicate. We can talk about anything. We can have a disagreement and still love each other during and after the fact. So for, I think for me, it's, it's really just keeping the line of communication open and not being afraid to have any and all conversations with her because, you know, she, she's going to love me regardless. That's true. She will. Kaden, what do you think about that? Um, well, yeah, communication, of course, and just being, you know, respectful and just making her job easier, basically, you know, not running around, you know, doing the dumbest things you can think of and, you know, just being respectful, listening to her, you know, all of that. I, yeah. Cool. What would you like to see happen for JG in season two? I've been kind of skirting around the issue because I've seen it and I don't want to spoil the storyline for anybody because there's some things that happened just in the first episode that if I started talking about that, Owen would be like, what you doing? (laughs) (laughs) So what, so just to skirt around that a little bit, what do, what would we want to see happen? What is our wish list for what would happen for JG throughout the course of season two of David Makes Man? I'll let Arlen go first. I think uh, season two, wish list for JG. I want him, I want JG to continue to take uh, leaps of faith. I think he has protected himself and lived in, in, that, in that safety safety bubble that he's created for quite some time now. And I think it's time for him to take some calculated risks and see what is on the other side of that coin and, and who he is on the other side of that coin. So I'm excited to see how, uh, how he plays that out. All right. And last but not least, um, let me uh, ask you, what is your favorite thing that you've been streaming while we've been in COVID? Katie, you go first. I got to think about this one. <laughs> uh, the Last Dance. I've seen it a thousand times. And you know, I'm going to watch it after this. The Last Dance, man. It's on like 10 episodes, but it's beautiful. I keep watching it over and over again. I'm hooked to it. I don't know why. I love it. I love it. Cool. Well, guys, thank you so much for this interview today. I enjoyed talking to you. Arlen, we're going to make that interview for Grand Theft Auto happen at some point. (laughs) They need to bring us back. It's that simple. (laughs) Congratulations on David Makes Man, you guys, and I'll see you soon.